Greetings from Frack Free Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I'm very, very pleased to be with all of you today. And I'm pleased to see that people still believe in their rights, exercising them as citizens. As I sat here and listened to the speakers talk to some of you beforehand, I was sitting in this chair and I see this juxtaposition, Columbus and the American flag. Columbus represented the expansion into the North American continent and it brought with it colonialism, that brought with it the yoke of tyranny, that brought with it a desire for something better. And a little bit of space in time, as it is that space between the statue and the flag, came a country like no other country in the world had ever seen that produced a document called the United States Constitution that endowed us all by the rights of nature, by our creator, with an inalienable right to self-government. It cannot be legislated away. It cannot be regulated away. It cannot be taken from us, that which is in our own very being. That statue represents what we're confronted with today. In Pittsburgh, we had a rough time. In 2003, the city was damn near bankrupt. And I was in the, that was my first year on council, lucky me. But as several years before, in 2003, it was announced in the papers there were 93 trillion cubic feet of natural gas lying beneath the feet of Pittsburgh and all of Pennsylvania. And we thought nothing of it. We thought nothing of it at the local level. Good jobs, energy, this is good. And we used to have a lot of gas here back in 1900, 1890. This is a good thing. In fact, I once said to a friend, the only way we're gonna avoid bankruptcy is if we hit oil at the point where the Allegheny and the uh, Monongahela at the confluence of the Ohio, little did I know. But then in 2009, I got a couple of phone calls from citizens wherein Someone knocked on their door in the neighborhood. I'll give you 1200 bucks, sign this lease. It's a standard lease. And they started to lease inside the city of Pittsburgh. We got no notice of the activity. We had nothing from our state government to go by. They opened the floodgates in 2006. They had the Halliburton loophole that exempted them from treating their waste streams as does the United States Steel, as does Alcoa, as does Joe's Bar and Grill. Only they were exempt. We all live by those rules. You, you don't have to. And we started to hear about a place called Dimmick. Nobody would ever heard of Dimmick for what befell it. A bad well casing that a, a, an oil and gas drilling concern denied vociferously that they had anything to do with the ruination of the water of Dimmick. Wasn't us. Wasn't us. Never heard of one well that was ever contaminated. Well, six years ago, my state's Department of Environmental Protection came out and reported 243 wells officially contaminated due to the process associated with extraction of natural gas by means of hydraulic fracturing. That's just the water. That's just the type of the iceberg because my DEP doesn't do a darn thing. And well, we have evidence of that. There isn't a day that doesn't go by that we read about some harm to us, to our fellow citizens, to our community. And so we were confronted with this mess. The first place you go is to the zoning code. It's land use, right? That's what these folks do here at City Hall. But when you looked at what you had to do, we realized that zoning was not going to be the answer. And besides that, the public doesn't even understand zoning law anyway. And when I came upon the CELDA folks and read their ordinance, 
the light bulb went off and I said, this is it. You move the issue from zoning, some obscure stuff in the law, to rights. It's about our rights. It's about us. It's about our citizenship. It is about our inherent inalienable rights to determine the character of our communities, not the colonialists from Exxon, BP, Chesapeake, the biggest pack of liars you ever saw, and they can sue me for libel, but they know they can't win if it's true. It is true. What Aubrey McClendon did, she should be in jail for, the president of Chesapeake. The lies and the deceit that was foisted upon us. But you can't blame a thief for being a thief. But you can't point a finger to those that sit in these halls of power and hold them accountable to you. You are the government, not this building, not the people in it. You are the government. And if you're not happy about the government, then go home and look in the mirror and start changing things. Because that's what we did in Pittsburgh. And when we enacted that bill, the first one of its kind, if not in the world, at least in the United States, we set off an earthquake. And I knew that it would be important. I had no idea the scope and the breadth that this would take on. And the reactions and the phone calls to my office from around the world, news agencies, everybody wanted to know what was this really about. And it was about us and how we live our lives. That's what it was about. And asserting the authority granted to me by you, we the people, and acting in your best interest. When I took an oath of office as do the people that work here, I upheld to live, to uphold the Constitution and to look to the health, the welfare, and the safety of those I represented. That's my primary duty. And in all the years and 20 years in government, I never saw an issue like this where the public's health and the safety and the welfare was taken off the top of the list and put somewhere down, way down. And what became prime was profit, was money, and power. That's not America. That's not the country we grew up and learned to love. That's not what that flag represents. It's about us. And then when we passed it around our neighborhood, neighboring communities, Homestead, West Homestead, Forest Hills, Wilkinsburg, all boroughs around Pittsburgh, Baldwin Borough, all enacted this ordinance because they recognized the threat, they recognized their obligations, and they said, no thank you, we don't want it. And that's power enough. You can't lead with greed, and you cannot govern from fear. How many elected officials have you heard? Well, if we do this, we might get sued. In the meantime, you're asking our sons and daughters to fight in Iran and Afghanistan and God knows where else to support that flag. You'll send people to their death, but you're afraid to go to court to stand up for my neighborhood? Who do you fear? Who do you fear? Exxon? Range Resources, Chesapeake, are you afraid of them? Let's go to court. Let's seek justice. Do you remember your governor with the secret memo where they colluded with the industry to take your Ohio Department of Environmental Protection, ODNR, and to conspire against you, against protests? against local organizers, do you forget? Somebody in there did. Somebody didn't go to jail for that. Nobody was charged and nobody knew who wrote the memo. And it got blasted around the world through our network of friends. Whether they be in Pittsburgh or the Karoo in South Africa or Australia, New Zealand, Romania, France, Vermont, Nova Scotia, all these communities, all these nations have taken a good hard look at the proposition of what this stuff brings with it. And they said, no thanks, we're changing the channel, we're moving to sustainable energy, we're embracing solar, we're using the wind, we're finding another way.
and find it we will, and find it we have. There is, we can always be against something, but you have to also be for something. Tell your state representatives, tell your local officials, we want you to stand for us. We want you to stand for a sustainable future. One that looks to these beautiful places that our parks, our rivers, our homes, as a legacy to leave someone not as something to be grabbed up by the greed. Tell them that. Make them understand. Make them understand at the ballot box. Make them come to Pittsburgh, and we'll be happy to take them on a tour to the sacrifice zones of Washington County and Greene County. We'll take you to the people's homes where they can't breathe without air filters in the homes. We'll take you to the people that have lost cattle that have lost crops due to the pollution from this industry. And this is not a Democratic, Republican, right-wing, left-wing issue. This is an issue that I have never seen like it before, where in Pennsylvania, when we challenged Act 13 that gave them license to run roughshod, it was the Republican township supervisors that challenged in the first Supreme Court. I've got Tea Party friends that see this the same way as I do. We have found common ground. We all have found common ground. I, the young, the old, the rural, the urban, the suburban, all have embraced this issue. And those that do never let it go. I have never seen so much determination displayed by a citizenry over one single issue as this. These people want to divide us, and yet in doing so they unite us. And so like Pittsburgh, like Las Vegas County, New Mexico, like Broadview Heights, Longmont, Colorado, Los Angeles, yes, even Dallas, Texas said no when they saw what happened there down the road in Fort Worth. They said no, Dallas, Texas. Somebody explain to me, I'd love to have a debate with the elected officials here, how is it that nations, states, cities, towns, and counties came to the safe conclusion that it is unsafe that the industry has lied and not to be trusted. The evidence is aplenty. Now is the time for you to gather your voices together and speak up. And now is the time to embrace the community rights ordinance that is before you. This is about your rights. This is your time. And it's our time to act together. I hope I see all of you in New York on the 21st of September. Anybody going? And you'll see how big this community is. Thank you very much. You have my undying thanks and support in your efforts to make for a better sustainable world and a better city of Columbus, Ohio. Thank you very much. All right.